pals. My name is Rosemary, and today we are going to do some grits bar, green, green card, grill, grit, green gar, green, 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 green gots, reactions. Let's do some green yard reactions. Today we are covering the Grin Yard reaction and other than having a very funny sounding name, I actually really like this reaction because it seems very complicated, but once you explain it in a fun way, it seems to make more sense. So before actually doing the reaction, we have to cover um, a kind of basic concept that can be very confusing sometimes, and it is the similarities and differences between a nucleophile versus a base. So the similarities would be that they are electron rich and they donate electrons. Oopsie. They donate electrons. And we know this because we know that anything with a negative charge can be a nucleophile or a base. So that just kind of um, pounds in the idea that electrons equal good nucleophile or good base. So a nucleophile donates electrons to attack slash make bonds. This is different than a base because a base actually wants to donate electrons to take a hydrogen. So nucleophiles want to attack and make bonds. Bases want to donate electrons in order to steal hydrogens. And now we are going to actually go over what exactly a Grignard reagent is and how to make one. So a Grignard reagent looks like so. And I'm gonna explain how it's a good nucleophile in a second, but I just want you guys to notice magnesium here. Whenever you see magnesium in Orgo2, you can pretty much guarantee that you're doing the Grignard reaction because no other reaction really uses magnesium in this class. So, Making a Grignard is actually not too complicated at all. We start with an alkyl halide, and usually we use bromine, but you could use chlorine or any other hal halogen. And so now we have magnesium. And the way I like to explain this maybe is a little bit unorthodox, but it'll stick in your head for sure. So this magnesium is actually gonna come in and this carbon and bromine are in a happy, loving relationship. They're bonded together. They're in love. But then magnesium is home wrecker. So it comes in and it breaks up their marriage. Right? And so now it's in the middle of carbon and bromine. So while it might look like one piece, in reality, the carbon is left very negative all by itself, very sad, all alone. It's sad, it's negative. But magnesium is really positive, he got the girl, he's happy, he doesn't care what happened to carbon. And then we have bromine, and bromine is a little bit sad and a little bit negative because she left carbon, but she has her new boo thing, so she doesn't really care. And while this may look like it's all one piece, as I said before, these are only really held together by very, very weak interactions between the negative and positive charges. That means if you were to draw out the um, molecule in the orbital diagram, you would see that the orbitals are very interestingly connected and they're very, very loosely connected to one another. So that being said, this entire thing is technically the Grignard reagent. But when you guys think about it, I just want you to care about carbon. We don't care about magnesium and bromine because they're a bunch of hoes. We just care about carbon. So now that we know what the Grignard reagent is, we can answer these questions. So we know that it's a carbon with a negative charge. So that means it is a very strong nucleophile and base. It can be both. And the actually nucle the actual nucleophilic species, as we said before, will be this much of it. Magnesium bromide can go away. We don't care about it. This 
is a very important concept to note, however, because since it is so powerful and it can act as a base, we have to make sure that we never have any acidic hydrogens. Because if we have acidic hydrogens, that means that the Grignard reagent will actually act as a base and the Grignard reaction will not happen at all. We will just end up with an acid-base reaction. And sometimes we might want that, but usually if we want the Grignard reaction to be going on, we don't want acid-base chemistry. So it sounds like a simple enough concept. Let's put it to use and do some examples. I'm zooming in now, but I will zoom out at the end so you can see all of the answers at once. Here we have a plain old ketone and we have our Grignard reagent, but I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the magnesium bromide and give a negative charge to our carbon. We know it's going to attack, kick up the electrons. So now we have a similar reaction to what happened with the reduction, except now we added a CH3 instead of a hydrogen. And at this point we have H2O, or we could have also used H3O plus or any other acid. Um, I just happened to give you H2O. And so we are going to steal a hydrogen from H2O to make an alcohol. And of course, we have our methyl group. Ta-da! Simple as that. Now, ET, remember, means ethyl. So this will attack again. But hey, now you have a leaving group. So we are actually going to do this again where we kick off the leaving group. And since it's the first time we're doing it, I'll actually go ahead and show you the long version of the mechanism. So we have O minus, and we added our ethyl group. But now we can see that we don't just have to protonate. We could alternatively bring those electrons down and kick off the leaving group. So at this point, we have reformed our double bond and we have our ethyl. But as we mentioned, these are very, very strong nucleophiles. So it's going to use another molecule to attack again. But this time we don't have another leaving group. So we're stuck with an O minus and two sets of ethyls. And at this point, there's nothing much you can do. You just have to protonate and we get a tertiary alcohol. So the concept I want you to take away from the second example is for every leaving group, you do the reaction one more time. So this means that if you have a leaving group, you will add the Grignard more than one time. Now we're going to do the lactone again, and pH stands for phenyl. So I want you guys to remember, phenyl means that there's no carbon coming off. If I had said benzyl, it would look like so. Both will come up. That's why I want you guys to remember this. Please don't get tripped up. So in this case, we are going to do almost the same thing that we did before. We kick up the thing, and we know that we're going to break the bonds eventually, but I'm gonna go a little bit slow. So we have our negatively charged oxygen. We added our phenyl group. And now we are going to kick these electrons back down, break open the bond. And so now that the ring is broken open, we're going to count our carbons and draw out a chain, which I have done here. And now that we have this done, I already went ahead and protonated this oxygen at the end just to get rid of that. And so now we are going to actually attack once more because we see that they have reformed the double bond. We kick it up, do this whole thing one more time. And since I was running out of room, I decided to 
Um, just write pH for phenyl instead of drawing it out. And this is essentially your final product. Not too much more complicated than a reduction. It's actually essentially the same kind of mechanism. Now for the next one, we don't have a leaving group, so we know this is going to be more straightforward. We just have CH3 as our nucleophile. Attack, kick up the electrons. As we said before, excuse me, as we said before, we're not changing the benzene ring at all. We are just going to add a CH3, and that would make a negatively charged oxygen. And since we cannot reform the double bond, we are actually going to go ahead and protonate. So we get a tertiary alcohol again. Last but not least, we're just going to do the same thing one more time. Attack. And now I'm going to do it the short version just to show you guys. So we attack. Electrons go up, come back down, kick off the leaving group. And so now we added the nucleophile and kicked off the leaving group. And we're going to attack once more because we know that's how strong the Grignard is. Bam. And so we end up with an alcohol that has two benzene rings, aka phenyl groups, attached to it. And a lot of people often ask, um, at what point does steric hindrance become too much and the reaction can't happen? Uh, because as you can see, two rings are kind of sterically hindered, might not be as um, good of a reaction as we want, not as favorable, but it actually will still happen. So if the Grignard reaction has a leaving group, it will attack multiple times. So every time we reform this carbonyl, we're going to attack with another molecule of our Grignard. Now, I love this reaction because it looks super big and complicated. And I want you guys to try it out yourself before you listen to my explanation. But we know that the CH3 minus will be our Grignard reagent. And we actually have an acidic proton. And that means instead of attacking the carbonyl and making the Grignard reaction happen, it will choose to be a base and steal that hydrogen. Instead of doing the Grignard reaction, we just did an acid-base reaction, and we will just have an equ equilibrium between these two. Similar kind of concept here. The tricky part is really that it's written in condensed formula. And the way I want you guys to approach this is the first couple times you do it, for sure, draw it out so you get familiar and comfortable with condensed formula. However, after a while, you can just look at functional groups and be able to find these answers much more quickly. So the first thing we notice is this oxygen is going to be an ether as well as this one. This one has no oxygens or anything in it, so this has no functional groups. It's just an alkyl halide. And here we have the COH, and I am very sorry about that. It should be CO2H, and that would be a carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid would definitely be an acidic proton. A and B do have oxygens, but they don't have acidic protons. However, D would be your answer. D cannot form because of our acidic hydrogen. That is all for the Grignard reagent and the Grignard reaction. See you guys.